Hello, it's Uncle Jim. Still too hot out for the beard and the wig. Sorry, Blue Healer. <laughs> but I still have milk jugs out there to spray. And uh, this time we're going to use 45 and we're going to go really fast. So we're going to use Powerball Plus P 165 grain. This is really old. Bought it, man, long time ago. That's what it looks like. It has a ball on the tip, and this could explode. We'll see what happens in a 1911. Here's another one I mean to try, and uh, these were devastating, but I can't remember the brand. Anyway, Hobby's Hobo, Mike, uh, just did a... He finally got his 45 out and shot some rounds of different reloads, and that was a good video, I think. And he was using a Commander Narinko. And I told him a story about, I was at a gun show, and I had it in my hands, and I thought 330 bucks for a used Commander uh, was a little stiff, so I looked around, went around the gun show, which was huge, and by the time I came back, that gun was gone. And I've been kicking myself ever since. Because those were very rare in the States, right before they got banned, uh, to get in a, a four and a quarter inch commander size. And those all came with enhanced everything. Uh, so I'm still kicking myself, my bad. So anyway... I'm going to whip out one of these Norinkos, and we're going to uh, shoot in the jugs. So I thought I'd give a quick overview on Norinkos. Um, Colt absolutely hated Norinkos in the country. And I bet they're part of the reason they got banned. <laughs> because these were running around for $300, new in the box, all forged, Okay. And uh, so I know they were pissed. So uh, these here are a copy of the World War II A1s, identical copies, all forged. And uh, I've done work on both of these, so they're not stock anymore. One's a carry and one's a GI with a shine. So um, these came with chrome line barrels, okay? And uh, some of them out of the box shot totally awesome, okay? And then others were fine. And then some were so-so. And the rule of thumb was the first thing you start with is fitting a bushing, okay? And going with the same barrel and maybe going with a little bit shorter link on the barrel. And then shoot from there and see how, you know, see how it goes. Um... I did that, but I still wanted more and more. This is back when I was playing, you know, working on guns and building them and stuff. Um, so uh, that's basically uh, how you get your group shrunk up uh, the quick, easy, cheap way. Then you can go to a barrel. And I have kept my barrels, but I, I went to uh, Storm Lake Barrels, semi-fit barrels. And then slightly fit, and this these barrels will fit in each other just fine. They shoot the same. And so um, this one is GI, what I call GI with the shine. Okay, it's got I re-blued it in the tank, blue tank, and then just polished up all the parts, put a little better front sight on it. They're stake front sights, just like your World War II, okay? And so that's basically your basic 1911. And then this one, I did a carry melt and uh, fitted an Ed Brown beaver tail. Um, I forget what these parts were. They're either Ed Brown or Wilson. They were cheap at the time. And did that, and then this one I gave a carry melt. So this was my carry 1911, and even the rear sight is melted. Changed the sights. You got to stake a new front sight on there. 
I even uh, melted the bushing. Everything is rounded over uh, so everything's smooth. And then just gave this a uh, scratch finish or a matte finish. Okay, a brushed finish. So it's not too shiny. And then everything around it was bead blasted matte. All right, and then I didn't have checkering files at the time. So I used an air hammer, an air chisel, and that takes balls. And this is how they did it old school. But I didn't want it too aggressive. And so I air hammered uh, stippling on the front, undercut it. All right, and then did the back strap, or the uh, mainspring housing, I mean. And that was just a simple, quick way to do it. Takes a little balls to do that, and it was the first time I ever air hammered anything. <laughs> but it turned out pretty good, okay? So there's that. Fitted the beaver tail, that took some work. And then all new guts. And this one's threaded for a suppressor, even though it doesn't have suppressor height sights. Okay, so that's all brushed and matte, and except for the trigger, not too shiny. And that's the Carry 1911. And my favorite mags at the time, well, still now, except for they're too expensive, are Kim Pro mags, okay? And I always wondered why I sold a million Kimbers. We were a Kimber dealer, and I always wondered why they didn't uh, give the guns with Kimpro mags. They got a no-dive follower, Teflon coated, and no plastic like Wilson. I've had Wilson's crap out on me on the follower. They get all wonky. And these are the best mags I've ever used in a 1911. But they're really expensive now. They used to, they used to be cheap, but I had dealer price. All right, so today we're going to, is there anything I left out on this? Not really. They were great. Uh, these, you know, they're 300 bucks, and they have mill marks inside, but that's how your GI World War II 1911s were, okay? And they were a great 1911 to work on, cheap. And they were all forged. As a matter of fact, I never did this, but you could go as far as painting down the rails and then lapping the slide so it's super tight. I never needed to go that far. Um, so, uh, but that's an option because they're forged. If it was cast, they would crack if you tried doing that, okay? On these, you can put a jig in there and paint down the rails and then stone them and then just get that slide on and lap that slide so it's super tight. But that's like your last re resort uh, for accuracy. It's, it's mainly in your lockup and your barrel, your link and your bushing. Those are your key ones that are just going to suck those groups down. And I guess we'll just end it at that. Uh, so yeah, Colt was really pissed. These were in the country for 300 bucks. As a matter of fact, on this one, I put Colt grips on it just to give him the old <laughs> screw you, Colt. Colt never liked the civilian market, okay? I, I, I can tell you all things, all kinds of things I don't like about Colt. I love the Python revolvers, but they were the first ones to, uh, during the assault weapon ban on uh, AR 15s, they came out a year before with neutered ARs. Uh, when everyone was panicking, trying to buy a real AR during the ban, when we knew the ban was happening, they already went uh, ahead and said, screw the civilians, we're just going to succumb. So I yeah, I just don't like them. All right, rant off. Anyway, let's, uh, let's try this out. Plus P uh, velocity, 1,225 feet per second, uh, 550 pounds energy, and this is a really old box, so let's see what happens. Oops, I forgot to mention I lowered and flared the ejection port on both of them. And it, they ran great out of the box, just like a GI would, but I did that just to modernize. All right, so there's that. 
Okay, this is going to be iffy because I don't have any milk jugs and I got a lot of tiny containers, so I hope this works. Also, Bisley Blackhawk misses Pirate Ducky. And I'm sorry, Bisley, I don't have the right containers to launch Pirate Ducky right now, but that one does have a pop top, so we'll see what happens there. As far as the Powerball goes, it feeds beautiful because it's got a ball on the end, but I carry 230 grain hollow points. Uh, but this should dump a lot of energy uh, in a 165 going that fast. So we'll see. Hopefully we can contain this. Well, I don't know what happened there. Pirate Ducky did a face plant. Way over here is the first jug. I hit right where I was aiming. Okay. Okay, so it looks like it didn't even go to the third jug here. And here is the second jug. And I see copper in there, so we'll look at that. Second jug, small jug. All right, so I put the second jug on the table to drain, and all I saw was copper. But then I saw this. Oh my God. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna get smart and use the strainer this time. Does anyone remember Get Smart on TV? The series? That was pretty hilarious. I really loved his Sunbeam, uh, Sunbeam Tiger car that he used in his first series. I always wanted a Sunbeam. I had a chance to buy one once for two grand and I should have bought that thing. I love the Sunbeam Tiger. Oh my gosh. Look at that. All right, you guys, place your bets and tell me what diameter that is. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, when I shot those jugs, I realized why I had so much lightweight self-defense rounds in 45 and the reason was short barreled 45s uh, for more feet per second out of a short barrel and that came about during the assault weapons ban a standard cap or a high cap magazine was the going rate was like eighty dollars to a hundred dollars so everyone went bigger caliber and less capacity and that's how you solve that you know, people like in California and stuff, they're going through that right now, if they can even carry. But we went to carrying short 1911s or short 45s. And one of my favorite disposable throwaway guns, in case they, you know, got confiscated or whatever, if you had to use it, was the Star, B, uh, Star PD, and I'll show you a picture right here. All right, the Star PDs were great little shooters. Uh, they felt good. They were a 1911 style three inch aluminum frame. So they were super light and easy to conceal. Kind of like a Detonix, but uh, aluminum frame. The problem was there was two problems with it. Uh, it kicked like a mule with 230 grain. So we carried lighter, faster bullets anyway. They fed most anything, and they shot awesome. At, at stars actually shoot really good in different calibers and everything. I've had a lot of stars. So I had two PDs uh, for carry and a short 1911, and, and that's why that's the I have a collection of this stuff. So uh, the other drawback with the star PD is uh, the aluminum alloy wasn't the greatest as it is today you know it wasn't as hard and all that 
They came with a little plastic buffer on your uh, guide rod. I still have a few of those. And uh, that kind of saved the frame. Uh, if you're looking at one today, I would scrutinize it on the frame, see if it's mushrooming, because that could happen. And it's because of the alloy, it wasn't the greatest. However, I never had an issue, I never had a jam, and they shot really good. All right, so uh, that's kind of why we have lighter bullets here. All right, so anyway, uh, history lesson over. Take your bets on what diameter that is and how much it weighs, and we'll weigh it right now. Okay, let's see what this weighs and what the diameter is. Place your bets. And I found in my parts bin, there's a Star PD buffer for your guide rod. That's an original Star PD. I got two of them left. They're not soft. They're just plastic. They're not soft like modern buffers, but that saved the frame. All right. So let's see what this mushroom weighs. 128.8 grains and then we're gonna add the copper jacket that shredded off of that Let's get that on there. Good 155.8 grains All right Now place your bets on the diameter. That is a big diameter for such a light 45 so All right, we're zeroed in and that's a pancake people that's just, that's just a pancake. So let me try it here. 0.8375. I bet we even get bigger here. 847. <laughs> How good is that in a regular 1911? Huh? It's a little spaceship. And uh, it's beautiful. I love it. And I'm glad I still have more in case I get a short 1911. But that would work really good if you got a short barrel. Let's do a close-up. If you got a short barrel 1911, it'll penetrate a little bit more. But look at that. That's awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video and a little history lesson of rambling with Uncle Jim, of course. But you younger guys might not know this stuff. You know, you probably never heard of a Star PD. And I've had two of them. I carried them for years. They were totally reliable. And the, you wouldn't believe what groups I got at 25 yards with that little cheap pistol. But if you're looking at one today, I'd be very afraid of the uh, battering they took if someone shot the hell out of them. Uh, the, the frame where the uh, slide hits the frame, you could have mushrooming there. So there's that. I hope you found this interesting. Until next time.